Hey everyone, welcome to another video, part of the Zig series. We're going to be doing the third day of the Advent of Code calendar for 2022. And let's jump in. So this is the uh, day three challenge, Rucksack Reorganization. I'm just going to read through the challenge description. You can also read this or just skip using the timestamps below. Elf has the important job of loading all of the rucksacks with supplies for the, ju the jungle journey. Unfortunately, that elf didn't quite follow the packing instructions, and so a few t items now need to be rearranged. Each rucksack has two large compartments. All items of a given type are meant to go into exactly one of the two compartments. The elf that did the packing failed to follow this rule for exactly one item type per rucksack. This is just an important sen uh, sentence to note because they're saying for exactly one item type per rucksack. So we know that later on that's going to be important. The elves have made a list of all of the items currently in each rucksack, your puzzle input, but they need your help finding the errors. Every item type is identified by a single lowercase or uppercase letter that is lowercase a and uppercase a refer to different types of items. The, lists, uh, the list of items for each rucksack is given as characters all on a single line. A given rucksack also always has the same number of items in each of its two compartments. That's also another important point to just remember. All right, so it always has the same number of items in each of its two compartments. So the first half of the characters represent items in the first compartment, while the second half represent items in the second compartment. For example, you suppose you have the following list. So you have this list of items and you know somewhere split along the middle is going to be the first half and the second half. Right? So the first rucksack contains the items, right? The string, which means its first compartment contains up until WR, so basically up until there, while the second compartment contains the items from this point on. The only item type that appears in both compartments is lowercase p. All right, so you can check that for yourself. And then it does the second example as well. All right, so the only item that appears in both compartments is uppercase L. The third rucksack's compartments contain that, and the only one in common is p and then VTS. Okay, so those are the examples to work with and I'll also copy this input to work with. To help prioritize item rearrangement, every item type can be converted to a priority. Lowercase item types A through Z have, or lowercase A to Z, have priorities one through 26. Uppercase item types, uppercase A through Z have priorities 27 through 52. In the above example, the priority of the item type that appears in both compartments of each rucksack is 16 for lowercase p, 30 k 38 for uppercase L, 42, 22, 20, and 19. The sum of these is 157. And the question here is find the item type that appears in both compartments of each rucksack. What is the sum of the priorities of those item types? Okay. And you can see, right, I, I put my answer in here. And this is also the first part of the challenge, which is what we're going to focus on. We're not going to do the second part. Okay, so there were some key bits of information. The first one here, and these are basically just uh, bits of information that can help you make assumptions, right? Because the challenge isn't perfect and the input isn't going to be perfect. So we just kind of assume that the input is always going to be given to us in an, exactly this format, which helps us with uh, making the solution. So for example, the, the first bit of information here was that uh, all items of a given type are meant to go into exactly one of the two compartments. Uh, and it said every, let's no, where did it say here? Um, the elf that did the packing failed to follow this rule for exactly one item type per rucksack. So given these examples, only one is the one that's consistent between the two, right? So it appears in both compartments. So meaning that we won't need to expect if there's going to be more than one item 
that was misplaced in both compartments. It's always only going to be one of those items. Then we know that it's always going to be split 50-50, which is helpful because it means that the length of each half is equal. All right, so we, we, we're never going to have a compartment that is larger than the other compartment. So that's also a nice uh, bit of detail to work with. And yeah, okay, so basically we're going to be given this input. We need to read the, the input and you can download your file. Uh, let's see what your file input here, usually at the bottom. All right, so you get your puzzle input that's unique for you. All right. And I'm just going to work with this as the puzzle input for now. So we're going to read through this. We read through the, the input and then going over each line, we want to split, right? So that we have compartment one and compartment two. And then we need to do some kind of looping through these compartments to find the item that is that is the same in both of those compartments. So there we need to have a little bit of uh, some logic as to the approach on how we're gonna do that and find the, the common item. Then once we have the common item, we can then uh, basically find its priority and then sum all the priorities together and return the answer. And there's a little bit of uh, thinking there on whether you should just convert everything into uh, numbers straight away, right? Because then you could maybe have some approach that's better to do with numbers than with letters, but you know, you can think on, on that so long. So let's copy this and head into VS Code. And then here inside admin of code, I'm gonna make day three. So let's just do this. And then inside, we have a day3.txt, all right, I'm just going to paste all of that in there. And then we're going to make main.zig. And this is going to be very similar to what we've been doing already in this series in terms of reading the file input. If you remember from the previous two videos, we have this logic here of opening the file and reading it into a buffer like this, and then tokenizing it and looping through uh, or using the iterator in a while loop, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy most of this here because I've already explained how this works in the last two videos. So if you don't know how or don't understand the opening and uh, reading the file, then you can just go back and watch those previous videos. So here we need to import the standard library here. And then we can get rid of some of that stuff there. And then we need to change the file name to day3.txt, okay? And we can also do the, the while loop here on iterator.next and then print out what we, what we see on each line, All right? So this is just gonna be like this with a new line and then we'll just do item, okay? And we're gonna go into admin of code, day three, and then run zig, run main.zig. And let's see here, this needs to, let's just put any for now and just see what we get, right? Okay, so this gives us an interesting uh, output here because each item, right, you can see it's got the, the brackets here, which makes this like a slice uh, of a fixed length. I believe that's that's the way to look at that. And we get numbers though, we don't actually get letters. And that's because by default, it's gonna be grabbing the, um, I believe this is the UTF-8 uh, character representation of, of each character. So if I change this to C, then now you can, now you get that, right? And this is really interesting because um, we can now see that they're all characters and actually we're seeing that 
it's also uh, represented in this slice very nicely um, printed out actually it's much uh, very easy to to read this and at this point what we want to do is then just split this in the middle of the of the slice to get the first compartment and from the middle onwards we get the rest of the slice which is the second compartment and so basically uh, slicing well whether it's slicing the array or slicing the, the slice, however we want to describe that, the syntax is relatively straightforward. So we can just say this is like the first compartment. Let's do it like this. And this is going to be item from zero up until basically the length divided by two, uh, which now to get that, let's just put pause on that line for a second. To get the length of this, we just do item.len, right? And if we divide it by two, then we'll get the halfway point. So let's say this is going to be half, half length, right? And if we then say from zero up until half length, right? And actually this is dot, dot, half length, okay? So that means that we're going to get basically up until I think this is up to R, right? That's the first compartment. So let's do that. Print out the first compartment. Right? I also comment out the first print there. And yep, that looks about right. Okay. So that's the first compartment, then we need to do the second compartment. So the second compartment is going to be from the half length. And here you can just do dot dot, meaning up until the end of the of the slice. I think we can handle it like that. So uh, let's do let's do a second print. And this will be second compartment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Here's the first one, here's the second uh, second compartment. There's again, first one, second one. All right, so the lengths are equal, which is correct. So this looks good so far, All right? So now we have the first compartment and we have the second compartment. The next bit, if we come back here to the problem description is we need to find the common item inside these two compartments, All right? Now, I'm sure there's a bunch of different algorithms we can use to just, you know, compare these two lists and uh, do some sort of cross section over the two of them to find which ones, uh, which items are, are common between the two. The approach I'm going to take is to use a hash map where we will loop through the first compartment, we'll add all the items into the hash map, and then we'll loop through the second compartment and compare each item and check if it's in the hash map. And if it is in the hash map, then we know we've found the single item and we can just stop there, right? And I think in terms of, if we want to think about this also in terms of performance, I believe since we'll be looping through the first loop, that's going to be O of N, then we're going to, and we're going to be assigning into the hash map. So the memory is also similar. Then we'll be looping over the second one, which is also O of N. So it's not, too bad of a, of a solution. I think it's it's okay. So let's let's start with looping over the first compartment, and this we can just call let's say I, right? And we need to then put these items into a hash map. Now to create a hash map, there's actually uh, a few ways that you can do this in Zig. But the easiest way is just to use the auto uh, hash map. And right, so like that, this takes in first, it's the type. So of the oh, type of the key and then type of the value, right? So the type of the key in this case is going to be U8, right? Because um, each of these items here are being tokenized as U8. So this is also going to be U8. And then the type of value could be, well, whatever you want it to be. 
in this case, we're not too considered. Uh, we're, not, we're not really concerned with the type of the value because we're more concerned with the key that we're putting in. So here I'm just putting in void. And once you uh, create the, the, the hash map like this, and, and this is not actually creating it, this is just specifying the types, basically. We then need to initialize it by passing in the allocator, which we already have up here that we created, All right? So we have the map. Now to insert into the map, if you just look at some of the methods here, you can see it has like contains, count, right? fetch, put, get, all these different methods here. And the one that we're gonna do here is get or put. And basically it just takes the key that you want to put inside, right? And this is just gonna be um, a little bit more convenient than just getting. It's basically just um, either putting it, either checking if it exists and if it doesn't, then it puts it in. So in this case, we're just gonna put I like that. And that's pretty much it, except we do need to try because this can also raise an error, right? Get or put result or an allocator error. So it says if the key exists, this function cannot fail. If there is an existing item with key, then the result entry pointers point to it and found existing is true. This found existing property is um, important, we're gonna use that. So we can assign the result here, let's just call it V, okay? Now, why we're doing this is because we're checking if the result of putting this key into the map had an existing result or not. So basically we can do if not V dot found existing, okay? That's what it meant by the property, all right, on this here. It says, then the result entry pointers point to it and found exist existing is true. So that's a property there. So if found existing is not uh, true, right, then we're going to assign a value. So here we can do V dot, this is gonna be value pointer, right, and then here I'm, uh, actually dereferencing it to get, uh, to assign the value of this key. And you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm assigning it to an empty, um, well, an empty struct, I guess, actually that's, or an empty, yeah, I believe it's just an empty struct. So like that, um, it's also initializing it as, as empty. So that's what, what all of this logic does here. And we can also check that all of this is going smoothly so far. If we just run and see what happens, you see we don't get any errors, all right? So, so far everything's good, but of course we're not really, we're not really doing anything. All we've done is just pass all the items into the map, all right? So at this point, our map has all the keys from the first compartment. Now we're going to loop through the second compartment and compare with the keys in the map. So we're going to do for second compartment. And this can be J, for example. All right. And this is really simple. Here we just do if map dot contains. Okay. So contains is a method. All right. If we, I don't know why it didn't show the, the um, auto suggestion there, but if I hover over it, it does show the method. So it just checks if the map contains a key. That's it, right? And if it does contain the key, then we know that we have found the item that is the, the common item, right? So here we can just say standard debug print found common, all right? And then do J, okay? And let's also do C character there as well. Okay. All right, let's see what we've got. So I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger. So here's the first compartment and the second compartment. And then you can see here, it found lowercase p, right? Which is correct, there's lowercase p in both of them. Then we have the second one here. There's no um, 
new line. I didn't print a new line, so it, it looks a little bit funny, but found common P, L, uh, uh, uppercase P, V, T, and S, which is the correct one here. P, uppercase L, P, V, T, S, right? So those are correct. We're finding the common item in all the, uh, between the two compartments. And I think what would be better is if we moved all of this into its own function that we could then call for each item, right? So I'm going to cut all of this and let's go and put a function here above main, which I'm just going to call find common and paste all of that in there. Okay. Now, what are the arguments that's going to go in here? It's going to be item and item in this case is going to be an array of U8, right? So this is going to be like that. And it also needs to have a return type. And because this can, ha uh, can have an error, we're going to put the union type and we want to return U8. The reason we're going to return U8 is because over here, we're going to return J. Okay, and we can basically return straight away because the moment we find the common item, we don't need to keep going through any more of the, of the second compartment. We can just return right there. So find common is what we're going to do over here. We also need to try and let's just call this common item or common character, right? And let's remove the print and put it back here. So find found common like that. And the only thing missing here is the allocator. Okay. So to pass the allocator into this function, we can do it like this. We can say allocator, and this is going to be a standard type allocator or standard memory dot allocator. And then we need to pass that in here. So this is going to be allocator. Okay, let's uh, try this out. Uh, let's just see here, error type uh, of error set with u8 implicitly returns, I believe that is because we actually need to uh, also include what happens at the end here. And this is just what it's talking about with the um, implicitly returned. Yeah, so we, we need to return something at the end here because technically it could go through this whole array and not have any matches, right? So in this case, we just return undefined at the end. And yeah, so everything's still working, okay? We have our common character and I'm also just gonna remove these two print statements for the time being, so it's just easier to read in the terminal. Okay, so the next step is basically to convert the uh, the letter A to Z and uppercase A to Z into their property uh, priorities, right? So from one through basically to 52. The way we're gonna do this is, well, first we're, we're gonna write a function here which we can just call get priority. And this is gonna take in Let's just call it the character, right? It's going to be of type U8 because that's what the character type is, right? U8. So we want to convert that character into basically a number. So let's just give it U32, for example. Now, the way that we do this is basically if the, the character is between lowercase a to z, then what we want to do is calculate the position of the character in ASCII, basically. So it's ASCII value because every character has an ASCII value. So for example, let's just print out, right? If I print out the character, actually this needs to be very different. So let's put any here. Character and let's do get priority. Uh, 
of the common character. All right. And we can just comment that out. And uh, let's just see, what did we miss here? Uh, U32, right, okay, so let's just return one. Right. And, okay, another thing here, result, All right? We have to make use of everything. Okay, so you can see these characters, they have values, right? Now, what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to put compared with, and this is also going to be any, and then put a, right? Just the character a like this. And let's see something. So we can see here, right? Now, the first number being printed here, this is the found, the, the common character, right? So this is the values p l p v t s okay now that's what those values are right you can see them there and we compare that with the value of a and when we print it out as any this is the asci or the utf-8 i'm actually not 100 percent sure what the, the which character set it is um but basically a has a value of 97 all right let's do capital a see what that value is and we get 65 okay so what we want to do is we want to actually subtract the value of a from whatever character we get so let's let's also do it like this let's do a with compared with or the number compared with a and the difference is okay so we're going to do just any here and let's do lowercase a and then here we're going to do uh, character minus a and let's just see here this is it's probably be okay integer overflow okay so what i'm going to do is like this okay like that now the reason that we're getting the integer overflow is because in some cases, right, here we're supposed to, uh, with the value of A is actually greater than the value of the character. So what we want to do is handle two different situations here. If the character is greater than or equal to A, then we want to do this difference here, right? And otherwise, so we can just do else, for example, the difference is going to be equal to the character minus uppercase a All right so we can then go and print out the difference here so this is going to be all right diff and diff here okay and this one is the uppercase uh uppercase a is here and let me close that on the sidebar Okay, let's see what we get now. Okay, so 112 compared with 97, right? So this is the lowercase a. We get a difference of 15. And then for the uppercase one, we get a difference of 11, right? And so on and so on. So the first two here were the uppercase ones. Oh, sorry, not the first two. The, these two selected here, those were the uppercase ones, which were uppercase L and uppercase P. And the first one and then the fourth, fifth, and sixth one were all lowercase, okay? Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we need to convert the character to a number between 1 and 26 if it's a lowercase and between 27 and 52 if it's uppercase. We've actually already separated the two in this if statement here because um, we are now basically checking, right, if the character is greater than or equal to A, lowercase a, then we know that it's lowercase, right? So that's that's basically the, the check here. Because low, lowercase b is technically greater than lowercase a, right? It's kind of unintuitive when you kind of think about it, but, but a is big, or b is bigger than a. So if, if you want to think about it like that in terms of the 
chronological order. So this is how you can then know that you're going to be dealing with the lowercase character. And this is how then in, in the else condition, we know we're dealing with a an uppercase character. So that's the first thing we've already got that there. But these numbers here are not really close to what we need them to be in terms of the the priorities that they were here okay so the value of for example from 1 through to 26 okay here we're getting 15 11 15, um, not 11 15 21 19 and 18 in those cases they're actually correct because those are the lowercase values right for example the first letter is p and you can see it's 16 but here we're actually getting 15. The reason for that is just because of um, the indexing here. So really all we need to do is just plus one and then we'll have that correct. So if we just try this again, now we get 16, right? And then it was 22, 20 and 19, 22, 20 and 19. So our lowercase numbers are correct. The last thing here is then to handle the uppercase character because right now we're getting 11 and 15, but we're supposed to be getting 38 and 42. But we know that for uppercase characters, it's going to be basically a whole range higher. It's from 27 to 52. So in this case here, we just have to add 26 because that's one whole alphabet higher. So if we try this again, we get 37 and 41. And in this case, it's 38 and 42. So in this case, again, it's that indexing that's happening there. So we need to add one again or just say plus 27. All right, 38 and 42. 38, 42. There we go. So that's that's basically it. Then here we would return that diff. All right, so this is how we are converting the, the character into a priority. And instead of doing all of this, Right, you can actually have a much cleaner way of writing this. So first, let's get rid of all the print statements, and we could we could actually just go straight to returning like this. And since we have that return statement, we don't even need the else. We just have an if, right? And that is pretty cool. But we can even make this even shorter, right? So we can we can do an inline if else statement. And that means that our return gets put into uh, the front of the line here. So basically we do return if, or if you want, you can copy this bit here. So we do return. If the character is greater than or equal to one, then we return this. Otherwise, character minus a plus 27. Okay. And if you want to make it nice and short, then you could do it like this. And there we go. Now we have a nice one line function that just converts the, fun the character into a priority. So this we could call a priority. Okay. And we can do like this standard debug found common C with priority. This is just going to be empty because it's a number. And this is going to be a priority. And you know, uh, these new lines are always what I forget. So try that again. All right, found common P with 16 and etc. etc. So now the last thing here is just to sum over it. And we've done this quite a few times here. So I'm just going to say sum is U32. And then here we just say sum plus equals priority. And then we can just do debug print total sum. And this is going to be with a new line. Let's just put one there and then sum and total sum 157, which is the answer. Okay. So that brings us to the end of this uh, of this problem. It's a pretty cool 
a little trick here once you go through all the steps to understand how this comparison uh, logic actually works uh, but once you want to do understand that you can actually do this sort of maths between characters and that it just aut automatically uses the UDF code uh, position that's actually really convenient so like that we have now solved the problem of course you can take the solution and run it on your own input and see if you get the right answer and other than that thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video